Welcome to Unit 3, Food Safety Module. In the Food Safety Module, we will discuss the types of food safety hazards and identify types of human pathogens that can contaminate fresh produce. We will highlight the most common ways that produce can become contaminated on the farm and describe strategies to prevent and reduce risk of contamination. In addition to emphasizing the value of commitment to implementing good agricultural practices. Let's get started. What are food safety hazards? A food safety hazard is any chemical, biological, or physical condition in fruits and vegetables that may cause illness or injury to the consumer. It is important to control food safety hazards while preparing the site for cultivation, during selection of planting material, and during production, harvesting, and post-harvest handling of fresh produce. For example, trimming, washing, grading, packing, transport, and storage. Contamination of fresh fruits and vegetables can occur directly or indirectly with contact of produce with hazards from soil, water, people, chemicals, equipment, fertilizer, soil additives, handling, transportation vehicles, and others. Good agricultural practices need to be adopted from preparation of the farmland, during production, harvesting, and post-harvest handling of produce to minimize various food safety hazards and control unacceptable health risks to consumers. What are chemical hazards? Chemical hazards in fresh fruits and vegetables may be produced during production, harvesting, and post-harvest handling, during storage and transport of fresh produce, or can occur naturally. Types of chemical hazards include, number one, agrochemical residues, such as pesticides and herbicides. Number two, non-agrochemical contamination, for example, fuels and lubricants. Number three, heavy metal contamination of the soil. And number four, naturally occurring plant toxins and allergens. What are biological hazards? Biological hazards are microorganisms or microbes such as bacteria, fungi, and viruses that can only be seen through a microscope. These are found everywhere in the environment and can be pathogenic or non-pathogenic. Pathogenic microorganisms are those that affect consumer health and cause illness either by the microorganism itself growing inside the human as an infection or by toxins produced by the microorganism. These microbes are mostly found outside of fresh fruits and vegetables, but some can enter the plant tissue. For example, bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella, fungi such as penicillin, viruses such as hepatitis A, and parasites such as cyst of giardia. Sources of biological contamination can come from poor personal hygiene practices such as coughing and not washing hands properly or regularly contact with contaminated soil, untreated animal and human waste, or contaminated water used for handling produce. What are physical hazards? Physical hazards are foreign objects that can cause injury or illness to consumers. They can enter the food chain from the environment, equipment, containers, buildings, and structures, human handling of produce, and packaging material. Food safety challenges. Food safety can be challenging for a number of reasons. Number one, many fruits and vegetables are consumed raw, so there is no cooking or kill step to destroy pathogens that may be on the produce. Number two, contamination events are often random, affecting small portions of the crop, so knowing contamination has occurred is difficult. Number three, 
microorganisms, as their name suggests, cannot be seen with the naked eye, so contamination is difficult to detect visually. Number four, contamination is usually present at very low levels and difficult to detect through product testing. Number five, Produce with rough surfaces, for example, cantaloupes, or large folded surface areas, for example, leafy greens, and stem scars, such as tomatoes, provide great places for pathogens to hide, thereby making pathogens difficult to remove by any amount of washing at the farm level or in the consumer's home. For these reasons, the focus of food safety in fruits and vegetables is on preventing contamination from occurring in the first place. Remember, contamination is difficult to remove once present. How is food contamination spread? We have identified the three types of food safety hazards. Chemical, biological, and physical. These hazards can be caused by five contamination sources, which are humans, animals, soil, water, and buildings, equipment, and tools. Number one, humans can carry pathogens and spread them to produce by surface contact or other means while they work on the farm. Workers who directly contact produce through activities such as harvesting and packing have the highest potential for contaminating produce. However, others on the farm, such as visitors, office staff, and volunteers can also contaminate produce. Number two, both domestic animals and wild animals can carry pathogens in their feces and spread contamination by tracking feces through the field as they move. Produce can be contaminated directly or indirectly by feces through contamination of water or cross-contamination from wildlife movement. Number three, water is used in many ways on the farm. Everything from irrigating to washing produce. Water is also a great vehicle for carrying and spreading human pathogens if the water becomes contaminated. Water can become contaminated at the source as well as at any point in its distribution and use. Number four. From the soil, raw manure represents a significant microbial risk to fresh produce since animal manures can contain human pathogens. Manure can be a valuable resource to farms and nutrient cycling. There are ways, such as through composting or by extending the time between application of manure and harvest to reduce food safety risk when using raw manure as a soil amendment. Number five. Another way that contamination can be spread that is often overlooked is through cross-contamination from food by surface contact, such as sorting tables, tools, and equipment. The best way to reduce risk is to keep all food contact surfaces cleaned and sanitized before and after they are used. Dedicating tools to a task will also reduce risk, such as having separate sets of tools for different jobs. For example, for cleaning food contact surfaces and for cleaning bathrooms. Debris, trash, or standing water can pose risks to food contact surfaces. Keeping areas outside buildings clean, free of debris or unused equipment, and also free of any overgrown areas will reduce pest harborage areas as well as their presence inside buildings. More details about reducing risk posed by buildings, equipment, and tools will be covered in Unit 6, Produce Quality Management. However, let's take a brief overview of cleaning and sanitization. What is the difference and why does it matter? Cleaning is the physical removal of dirt or soil 
from surfaces which can include the use of clean water and detergent. While sanitizing is treatment of a cleaned surface to reduce or eliminate microorganisms. A dirty surface cannot be sanitized. Not all surfaces can be sanitized, but all surfaces can be cleaned. This may include sweeping, wiping off tables, or brushing or rinsing off dirt from harvest totes. Cleaning must be done before sanitizing. Surfaces may also be cleaned with a detergent and a sanitizer or another treatment that can then be applied to reduce or eliminate pathogens and spoilage microorganisms. Food safety begins with your commitment. The importance of a grower's commitment to food safety cannot be overstated. The safety of produce depends on the grower and every person who works on the farm. Growers need to know what risks exist on their farms before they begin. Many Bahamian farms have limited resources, so think about your agricultural operation critically and identify the biggest risk and work to minimize those risks first. Implement practices to reduce the risk identified. Practices might include training workers or composting manure before it is applied to fields. Monitor implementation to make sure practices are done and are being completed correctly. Implement corrective actions to fix a problem identified through monitoring and prevent it from occurring again. Record keeping is very useful in making sure tasks are being completed and to visualize trends over time. Assessing risks. Assessing food safety risk requires a systematic review of the farm location, practices, conditions, and typical situations to determine where contamination could most easily occur. Many situations and risks will be discussed during this training, but each farm has its own unique risks. Growers should focus on learning how they can assess these risks so they can evaluate their own farm. Most farms are already implementing practices to reduce food safety risk. So, many growers are likely doing some of these things. Some things may only require a slight modification of practices, while others may require a capital investment. Growers should prioritize those risks that they think will have the biggest impact on produce safety and address those risks first. So, they should choose their investments wisely. If growers are unsure about what practices may work best for their farm to reduce food safety risk, they should consider contacting the Department of Agriculture's Extensions Unit or BAFSA for more information and technical assistance. Standard Operating Procedures Standard Operating Procedures is a written document defining how to complete a specific food safety practice. This can help growers implement GAP and ensure that practices are done properly. It is best to keep it simple and clearly written. Think of a standard operating procedure as a recipe card. It provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete a task that needs to be done for food safety. It also includes where the supplies are located to complete the task and how often tasks should be done. We encourage you to take notes from these modules so you may develop standard operating procedures for your farm. Monitoring. Monitoring is very important to ensure food safety practices are done properly and at times when they have the most impact. Monitoring appears in each module to highlight its importance and the benefit of identifying problems before they impact the safety of produce. Corrective action. Corrective action plans can be established in advance for problems that are reasonably likely to happen, such as too little sanitizer added to produce wash water, 
Some of these events cannot be predicted, so corrective actions may need to be developed after the problem has been identified. Monitoring will help identify when a corrective action is needed. These corrective actions can be then added to the overall plan. Growers can also have a plan for responding when the unexpected occurs. Either way, corrective action plans should be directed toward fixing the problem and helping identify the underlying issue to reduce the likelihood that the problem will occur again. Record keeping. Record keeping includes documenting practices, monitoring, and corrective action. Many Bahamian farmers do not keep farm records and express that this is due to the many other farm activities required. It is important to make record keeping easy and useful. There are many templates to use that can be tailored to each farm. We will include some useful links at the end of this module. Make sure the record keeping logs are located near where the task need to be done. If the records are in the office, which is a five minute walk from the packing area, there is a chance that the record will not be filled out. Required records must be dated and signed by the person who performed the activity. Be sure to review logs on a regular basis to make sure there are no problems. Managers or a responsible party must sign and date certain required records after they are reviewed. Required records should be kept for at least two years past the date the record was created. Retaining records for at least this length of time is necessary to ensure that the records are available for reference during verification activities as well as during inspections or in the event something goes wrong. Electronic records are considered to be on-site if they can be accessed from the farm via computer or other devices. In preparing for a hurricane, it is advised that records are removed from the farm office and kept in a safe place until after the storm passes. The Benefits of Record Keeping There are many benefits to record keeping. Some include the assurance that the task was completed and done properly. Record keeping allows for identifying trends or irregular activities that may cause problems in the future, such as toilet facilities that are frequently out of stock, indicating that they need to be checked and cleaned more often. Record keeping is required for certain activities, such as insurance purposes or technical assistance after a loss due to a natural disaster, drought, pests, or diseases. Record keeping basics. Duct tape, pencils, clipboards, log sheets, and plastic sleeves go a long way to facilitate record keeping. Technology can be used for record keeping as well. Phones, apps, tablets, and computers can make the transfer and saving of documents easy for food safety. This allows for a safe storage of records in the event of damages to the farm office during a hurricane. If using electronic record keeping, be sure that the records are authentic and cannot be changed after entries have been made. A farm food safety plan. A farm food safety plan guides practices to ensure food safety. It gets you thinking about your unique farm and practices which will keep you organized to focus your time and resources more effectively. This plan ensures that everyone is involved and that your progress on achieving milestones is documented. In concluding this module, here are a few take-home messages. 1. Produce safety impacts every farm. Outbreaks also impact the health of consumers, they reduce confidence in produce and influence consumption decisions. Two, 
The financial viability of farms depends on safe produce because outbreaks can negatively impact sales and the local economy. 3. Commitment to food safety is critical to the success of every farm food safety program. 4. Leadership should be provided to guide the implementation and management of produce safety practices on each farm. Never underestimate the value of setting a good example for all of your employees to follow. And five, writing a farm food safety plan is a good place to start. This concludes Unit 3 in our course on good agricultural practices. Be sure to watch Unit 4, Environmental Management Modules.